be some hit early. Feeling, but, uh, I mean, people can't just move that fast. Right. If it's 140 but, families, you've got to figure at least two people, two children. You know, and if half of those people have kids, mm -hmm. we're looking at close to $60,000, guys. We could be in, in state <coughs> funding. Right. And that would be a, a position and a half or two positions. And uh, part of the conversation that we were having earlier at the study session was the possibility of expanding uh, the teaching force, but we've already cut that back because we don't know. Uh, actually, there was cutting it back before Dean's actually made their announcement, so uh, it will have an impact. Uh, probably the other thing that will have an impact is, you know, as you, because you've been here, several others have been here, we've been talking about the need to do further improvements for the buildings, but to do improvements to the buildings at a time when we've got, you know, a potential, you know, addition of 30% to the unemployment roll by those 100 and some families, um, that's, you know, that's going to uh, slow that down a little bit, I suspect. We may have to stretch that out a little bit or do something else. That'll be a board decision over the next two, three months, I'm guessing. That's, that's assuming that every family lived within the school district balance, and we don't know that. Right. Um, uh, Janet, if just for Mrs. Superintendent, is, is there any, when we enroll students, is there a record of where the parents work? Yes. <coughs> you can search that way after registration, absolutely, how many families that work. All right. Now, is that something that the number of students that could be made public since it's personal information as to where they work, or is that the number, not who, but the number, is that something that could be made public? That would be directory information, so okay. that, I believe that could be made right. public. One that will check before we really set, before we could estimate it in round numbers. You know, we could yeah. have the number, I'm saying 23, it could be you know, in the 20s or yeah. something. Yeah. Okay. Did what impact uh, the property tax? I mean, some of these will have to pay property tax on that, whether it's full or empty, but being an operating factory, will value of the property go down, or how do you see any? Well, the property tax, uh, the property tax on the buildings will not go down for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, year one, year two, year three, I, and I don't know what they're being taxed at, but it, it will stay about there, but then it, if it stands empty, then it will start to, to fall, as will the industrial property around there. Um, the biggest impact will be, and it'll hit the school corporation, the water and sewer rates have to react to the fact that they're losing a third of the capacity, but they're not losing a third of what's built out there and the tax and the bonds they're paying. But Dean's, because it's a user fee, since Dean's won't be using it, they won't be charged that property tax, they're still going to be paying property tax as long as they own the building. Um, the other thing is the, uh, at the county level, we've got a couple of county uh, cadget and seated taxes that are based on earnings, and to the extent that the earnings are going to drop because those people won't have that job, that'll be a loss. When they replace that job, they'll probably, most of those jobs will be replaced with lower paying jobs. So. The cadget and seated taxes will come down. Um, revenue, total revenues will come down. That does not particularly uh, or specifically impact what we do. It does impact the economic development opportunities that the community has. So uh, there will be that impact. Uh, I don't believe that you know, part of what we get is sales tax revenue, but it's not. We don't get a piece of Fulton County sales tax revenue. All the sales tax revenues go into the state, and we get a portion of what we get out of that. We get a portion of what we get out of the income tax and other state taxes. So uh, the, the property tax impact will take a while to see, but probably the sewer rates going up are going to be the, the first thing. And then more people who won't have the benefits of what was a pretty good health insurance plan probably you know, 90 days out or something like that. Um, we'll see some greater demand on the compassionate care clinic and things like that. So, and on our school nurses. Thank you. Just keep it on the right card. I'm sorry. 
appreciate it. Any other questions? Sherry, in those payrolls, if you were, do you remember, were there, I know that there was some retirement impact on there. It looked like maybe closing out of some of the people who were retiring. And there were some others <coughs> that were higher. Were there extra coach pay? Or? If we had a, um, we had some teachers that went into administrative positions, so their teaching contract was done, so that was paid off and their administrators was started. If you think that we can come. <laughs> Sherry, these, these numbers that, that we have in front of us, um, are those as expected, or is there any <coughs> concerns or surprises in those numbers? Um, no, not this one. Okay. Do you mean as the funds as a whole? Yes. Yeah. yes. And I would say the capital projects is still one that we are trying to monitor very closely and, and uh, cut. <coughs> Being cut 350, right at 350, we're going to have to be paying careful attention to that. So it looks really healthy today, but we need to continue to monitor that as well. Well, in that fund, isn't it? They were all about at 50 percent, you know, at half the year, about 50 percent um, spent. But does that, for the capital projects, does that mean that that's 50 percent of what we budgeted, but we actually are going to receive less? So that is. You can receive, we're going to receive last year at 50%, but most of our expenses, it's looking like in technology, me and Scott were looking, um, renewals hit in November and December. So a, a, a whole lot of this money that is appropriated has not been going to have to watch really close when we get down to the end. What we have and our maintenance has been up because of our things breaking and stuff, and that we're going to have to even out here or it's going to have to flow into the general one of them. The maintenance is going to have to flow into the general fund or our technology is going to form the general fund. Any other questions? Okay, if not, not uh, I need a motion to approve the uh, financial report. Summer? Okay. Commissioner okay. Sandy? I'll second. And second by Jenny. Any other questions? Not all in favor, right? Motion carries seven. Okay, student stakeholder focus. Uh, we had some donations. RMS PBIS awards. Uh, Walmart donated 32 inch TV. And uh, BNK uh, donated root beer coupons and a gift card. There we go. All right, we need a motion to uh, accept the donations. I'll move to accept the donations as listed. Okay, motion by Lisa. Second that. And same by Steve. Any other questions? All in favor? All right in. The motion carries 7 0. Uh, the RHS handbook change. I think Chris Kiesling is going to speak in regards to the changes in the, your handbook around the nursing, and there were just a few minor changes there. Yeah, one of them had to do with the price change, I believe, with the prom. Mission. They were very minor changes. Uh, that was one. Uh, Did that have put down any the other one? I think it had to do with the nurse. The ones that Adam had shared with me are the nursing briefs that needed to be updated in the handbook um, in regards to shots, immunizations, that type of thing. The $25 prom fee um, was voted on and approved by the board at an earlier meeting but was not reflected in the handbook. So that was just an update and informational process with the handbook. And then the last thing that Adam is asking for is on at the high school when uh, somebody comes in to sign out a student at the high school that we make sure that it's either a parent, a guardian, or somebody on that emergency contact list. I think sometimes when you, um, with 17 and 18 year olds, I think that they feel there's a little more liberty of who can pick them up and, and run them around. So we want to make sure that it's designated to parents, guardians, and those listed on the emergency contact list. And again, we try to work with parents. If somebody calls in and there's an emergency, but for the most part, we want to limit it. We want that important so that they're not just taking um, free reign of who's checking them in and out. And those are the only changes that- I might add that last one there is one that we've had to deal with few times just for the same point that good many people are simply trying to get through their day and get 
kid picked up, but uh, we need to make sure it was stipulated that it was emergency contact from Guardian uh, to make sure we had the, the correct people. So this day and age, we, we have so many connections with kids. <coughs> I was reading that, that change in the handbook, and I could be wrong, but it seemed like it read that only people on the emergency contact list would be picked up. I mean, could pick up a student. So I didn't read custodial parents and anyone on the emergency contact list. Do you know if it reads that way? It was read, it, it, it was emergency contact and or custodial parents. And or? Yeah. Okay. We need to vote on that. We already approved the book. Do we need to vote on minor changes like that? Uh, since it's on the agenda, you should. Okay. So we'll need a motion to approve the change. A motion to approve the changes as listed. <clears throat> okay. Motion by Lisa. I'll second. Second by Sandy. Any other discussion? All in favor, right now. Motion carries. Seven zero. Student technology handbook change. Scott, were you prepared to talk about that? Or I know that Dan shared. He um, he shared the, and I emailed everybody the minor changes. One was the update to all of the replacement costs and everything. Um, the just very few minor changes there. A lot of them were grammatical errors that were listed and then per Ted suggestion, um, I believe it was item 7.0, don't have that right here in front of me, Which one? on the technology handbook. Ted had made a suggestion about removing one of the, I think that was 7.5. 7.5. Seven point five is the updated replay, updated cost. Thank you. Do you have that email? Maybe it's 7.7. Listen, I can't have the
plan for notification? Because it seems like, of course, the student or guardian would be notified of cost due to damage. Is that the tech department's responsibility, the principal's responsibility, the teacher? <coughs> Do we, what, whose responsibility is it to notify the families of the charges? Typically the administrative team works with the family in regards to that. They have communicated with the tech department. They know specifically what that restitution would be or what needs to happen. And then the administrators as they're working through the incident will work with the family. failure to timely return the property or the discontinued use of it for non-school purposes without the district's consent is considered unlawful appropriation of the district's property. This may constitute theft, a felony, or conversion for which parents and students could be liable for three times the cost of the property plus attorney's fees. That one we are moving to strike and take out of the book. Um, and then the update to the screen, uh, or the update to the graph regarding charges, and then the others were just the grammatical throughout, um, commas and periods and round sentences, that kind of thing. So the major change comes in 7-6 striking, or I'm sorry, 7-5 striking it and updating the graph. And the reason for striking is it's not a valid threat. The Court of Appeals has said that you, know, uh, you can't threaten a minor with the treble damages or something like that. So. Probably shouldn't threaten with illegal action, so that's probably not a good idea. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Any other questions? Now we'll need a motion to approve the uh, tech handbook change. So moved. Uh, a motion by Sandy. Second. 
I second that. And second by Steve. Any other questions? All in favor? Right here. Thank you. Welcome. Motion carries 7 0. Book fees. We had cents on the end, and the secretary said it easier and pairs if it was just rounded up, so it's zero. That's not a change. So, like if it was. Round them off even dollars? Right. You round it up yes. after 50 cents and down, or just mm -hmm. round it everything up? Just round everything up. Everything's up. Okay. I think there was one for everything over eight. Three. That was after talking with the building level secretaries, secretaries and treasurers. <laughs> okay, the motion to approve the book fees. So moved. Lisa? Second. Second by Sandy. Any other discussion? All in favor? Right here. Motion carried. Assembly. Information analysis, the facility update. I spoke with Terry Thornsbury today at Columbia. Um, the a AHU's fire alarm and gymnasium lighting, they're going through the entire punch list and they hope to have all of that done in final on Thursday of this week. Um, at Columbia, there is another uh, shipment arrival date on 717 for carpet in the hallway. I know that they were just a couple of um, pallets short of that. They still anticipate it shouldn't take long to get that laid. I don't think it's a huge area as a Tammy, and they anticipate that they will be done long before the start of school. There are a few pieces regarding the door hardware. The shipment date on that is on July 24th is the shipment date. Terry felt that once it arrived, it would take less than two days to get that in. So he believes that will be done and completed before school actually starts. Um, at Riddle Elementary, again, with the fire alarm and the lighting project, the final punch will be this Thursday. Um, at the exterior building uh, at Riddle, the demolition of all of the, the soffit is complete. They're currently installing the structures for the new soffit and the new light fixtures to be placed around the building there. And then of course, EMB has been very disappointed in the weather, obviously with the parking lot there at Riddle and, and it's nothing that they can control when, when weather permits. They're out there as best they can, but they've been held up with that weather there at Riddle parking lot. At the high school with the locker room, HVAC, um, they're currently working on that pro, uh, punch list and they anticipate it being done on Thursday of this week as well. Um, the transformer punch list will be done Thursday as well, but it was a smooth transition with Duke Energy from the time that they shut it off and, and rebooted us. I don't believe that there were any problems at all and everything came right back up and they were about a day ahead of schedule, so they were very easy to work with. And then the bus lot renovation project, the parking lot is complete and has been repainted. The light poles and light fixtures will need to be installed. And then we're hoping to get some landscaping in and around that area where they tore that up if weather permits, but that will be one of the last things that's finished. But we will definitely be able to use the bus lot and have been using the bus lot this week. So um, doing well on those projects. Much easier than it was last year this time. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, move on to the soccer field lease agreement. Brian Helt shared um, a, the new soccer agreement to use the soccer field. The major change is they are proposing a one-time $1,500 lease agreement fee, but with that, uh, they have agreed to take on the dugout projects from us. We were anticipating having to look at, I think it was around $3,000 out of capital, 3,500 out of capital projects for the dugouts. They are now willing to take on the dugout portion of the contract and are just asking us to make a one-time $1,500 fee annually. It'll, that is the, the major change there to that contract. Jana versus what? Last year, we have not paid before. It, there was a period of time when we shared our maintenance gentlemen and they went out and would mow and help maintain, but we are no longer able to provide that service for them. Um, so they're asking for that $1,500 with them. We did send mowers? Before, in years right. past, but not in the recent past. We but, have not. Okay. but that original lease agreement, they were going to take it. They were going to take care of everything, right? And now they're asking us for $1,500. And 
and it does say we are to mow once a week during the season. We have, we are taking that out. They know we are not doing that. I mean, I know that that we are striking that from the agreement. So the agreement that we have is not the agreement that you. you know. Looks like the <clears throat> new agreement includes all the maintenance duties that the soccer association will do. It says include but not limited mowing, marking, irrigation, weed control, fertilization, general upkeep, and improvements. So that seems to cover about everything. I guess I was reading it differently under C. The FCSA shall provide the school facility at a charge not to exceed $1,500 annually and that the only maintenance required of the school shall be mowing the game field once weekly during the IHSA soccer season. So does that mean that this school is requiring FCSA to mow no, it? No, we will mow the one time. They were at, but what was not reflected here was a request that we mow all, like periodically with them through the season. They were asking us, they were asking us to continually help with the mowing and the weeds and everything out there. All we are responsible for is the preparation of the field the week of the event. One time. Once One. weekly during the uh, season. So once every week during the season is how that reads, if I'm reading, the way I'm reading it. I lost they generally have a game week, I imagine. Pretty much, but I'll have Ryan work with them and check that. So we want the table back, so let's clarify. Well, with the season, if, with permission, if we can get that change, if that's the only change, can we do that? So most of the summer they will be mowing. So yes, yes, they wanted us to mow. Will be right, and we could not take that on during the right. summertime, and have not been taking it on. It says it'll give us the opportunity to collect gate fees. So do we collect gate fees? Yeah, well, somebody wants to be there. And that goes back to the school, right? Yes, it goes back to the athletic department. I'm not sure. Then is it the concessions that were different? Because I think they took one of them and we took the other. The con they're still keeping the concessions. the concessions. They get the concessions and we get the game fee. Yes. Okay. What do we pay for the softball field? I asked Ryan about that this weekend for if, why the girls didn't file it. Like attorney said, I think there's some 99, and don't quote me on this, but 99 year agreement where it costs us nothing for the softball field. Did, were we uh, responsible for the improvements at the softball field, though? That's that mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The school we did that. continue to maintain and move. Right. And yeah, you do that. Right. Yeah, we do right. That. So it's, right. that's a push. Old, kind of. At the old football field, no, so softball field. Yeah. If the board wants to put a limitation on it, that it's valid if they make a change to something, you can do that, authorize the superintendent to sign if a change is made to paragraph such and such. But the board needs to take so out changes. Striking and mowing all together? Possibly. Other than the week of events. Oh, the school and the week of events, okay. Then we <coughs> But we in turn are going to get the, the duckouts and the concessions. And no, we don't. We're, we're, we're not going to get. We're not getting no, them we anymore. Get the we're not we get the gate fees, but not concessions. Yeah, we get under on gate fees in the past. The average. Any idea what's going on? I can ask. And yeah, one thing that's important to me sure. is if we pay for this, where does what fund does this come from? Capital project. We can take. But then the money goes back to the athletic department, so we never really regain that money then. Right? right? Right. So we pay for it out of capital projects, but money goes back that way. For, for the gates, yes. Unless you instruct them to take it out of the athletic fund. Where does we've the We've talked about capital done? projects being struck and capital projects being struck and things like that. That concerns me. Maybe that's something we can do. At least recoup the original 1500 then after that. Yeah, and maybe we won't for gate fees, but we're minimizing our loss that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure if you have 20 parents show up, you charge $5, that's $100 a game. I don't know how many games a season they play, but it's just yeah, a thought. You know, Julie, can athletic, can they support that? Um, I think we're going to you have to look at it closely. And I think that was part of the Brian's concern is his sure. overall budget. Oh, sure. I, athletics is going to be a loss leader anyway, for the most part, I guess. 
Yes, yes. But, but we can do it on capital projects out of the sports part because that is maintaining our girls and men's soccer that we, we can't maintain on our, that we can't maintain on our own. We don't have fields and stuff to do it. So it's still a lot less money trying to build our own field, basically. And we had anticipated <coughs> needing to pay for the dugout, so that was. You said it was three thousand. Thirty-five hundred. Thirty-five hundred. I have a couple questions. Is the agreement, the previous agreement here that was struck in two thousand and seven, was that the last agreement? Or was there agreement since then? Because that one expires in 2011. So I know that that would be an easy oversight. It wasn't on your watch, so I'm not set about pointing it out. But I do think we need to make, be above board on that. That this agreement did run out in 2011. I would assume that we've been operating by the same agreement since. To my knowledge, I have not. This is the first that I've encountered this. We within the last year until we've talked about this, Don, because I remember Joe's concern. Regarding the fact that we were never that that they were going to maintain the field, and he he was fairly concerned about the mowing. Do you yeah. remember that? Is that ringing any bells now? Um, that that wasn't something I that we had. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know that, that you know. I don't know if it's worthy or not. But um, so I know that we've discussed it okay. prior to that. Well, that's or since then. I'm sorry. Uh, the other question is why why. Is the schools the data in here about the number of players? If we get beneath, we're not going to have a team. Why is that in this agreement? I mean, that that seems like that's an, an in-house thing only. Um, I, I I would imagine that that's an IHSAA requirement. But why would that be in this agreement? My guess is because if we don't have a team, then we wouldn't need the use of facilities and wouldn't wouldn't be paying the fifteen hundred and maintaining the once a week during during the season time. If we can't carry a team, we most certainly wouldn't want to pay the fifteen hundred dollar fee. Don, if you'll remember this the two thousand seven contract was the first contract. Yeah. And they threw in some special benefits in order to encourage the board to adopt. Uh, yes, soccer. because we were concerned about whether we could even keep a 15-member team. Right. right, and so I think that's that's how it got in there the yeah. first time. I don't I don't know who negotiated the terms of the, t of the contract in those days. I'm, I'm assuming the new cloud and well, I was the one that signed it. So I, I see that. Uh, <laughs> I remember the packed room. <laughs> Bunch of high school boys, the ones who play soccer, and, and the girls who were already playing soccer. So. Well, that, that would be if both girls and boys teams felt that, no, it's different times, isn't it? Yeah, different, it's different seasons. Different seasons. Okay, all right. Yeah, so. Okay, well, now so I think that's what it I understand. Okay, that's the basis. And once you get them in there, they're in there forever. It's hard <laughs> so, to so this is the, the $1,500, is that, that's an annual fee. Annual. So if one season doesn't happen, we still have full annual fee. Okay. I don't think there's much chance of this season to cancel, but that's the way it is. No, and as we're talking about soccer, Ryan shared with me today, Ryan has had a couple of leads on soccer coaches, but as we went through the vetting process, decided for various reasons not to hire those particular people. We have a gentleman who has now come to our attention that Ryan is interviewing on Thursday of this week that we have a lot of um, confidence in. So we, we hope to have that done and, and established by the end of this week, but it's not for lack of interviewing and thinking we've had good candidates. It's just when we've gone through the vetting process, it has not been uh, exactly what we're looking for for our students and our athletes and players so again we'll, we'll interview on Thursday and, and have a lot of hope for the, the gentleman who's applied there any other questions uh, what would the board like to do I mean you had some reservations uh, are you satisfied with the wording I thought Ted had an idea, 
being contingent. Just vote to approve it with the exception of the mowing? Yes. Well, contingent upon the changes. Upon the changes, okay. And that's the only change you're considering that I need to look at with them. Okay. okay. So what's the change you're considering? Mowing only when there is a game? Right. We will take care of the fill the week of the game. And that's probably more than just the game though because those are our right. kids will be on that the field practice. every day right. it's yeah. for practice but we're saying that the FCSA would need to mow if it's a, only a practice week I'm fine with keeping it in that we mow every week I think that would get honestly quite confusing to say we're sending this crew over this week but next week there's no game and the game got canceled I feel like we've used this field that volunteers and community members built. We've used it for years at very minimal expense to us. And it says as a testament to them that they didn't come, even when this contract ran out four years ago, to say, okay, let's renegotiate. We want our money. I think there's another contract out there. To leave it as That would be my, how I feel. Does it say whose equipment is being used? It would be ours. Which is no different than our football field or our Or that we go over field. and mow the softball field. I mean, the right. football field, of course, is right here, but if we're going right. over to fans, it's not that much. Right. So, the length of that season, I think that that's fine, personally. So, I, I'm going to make a motion that we approve it as it is. As it is. Okay, so let's get the mowing straight. So it'll be uh, once a week during the soccer season. We're going to take care of it during the, the soccer season. Not the summer. Right. That, that's that how would, I, yeah. I, would, right. yeah. I wouldn't say that's the season. I mean, right. my, my understanding right. of the season would be. It says the IHSA. So during the. Well, the season is the moment the practice starts. And for some looking at the girls varsity season here, we're talking one, two, three, four, five, six games. From August 24th through October 3rd. So for a month and a half. To put it into perspective. So for a month and a half, we're going to take care of it. That now, and then include the spring, there's six games there as well. Right. The mowing should slow down late in that season. You can certainly think so. You think so? I don't know. <laughs> we'll talk about the spring. It would be early in the spring. What, what are the games? The spring there's about six in the spring, too. But you're going to mow all the way. We're getting in the weeds too much here. We're going to mow the <laughs> We are. Weeds. Pun intended. We're going to be in October. We're still going to be going there, but you know, in the spring, basically 12 times, 12 games, boys and girls, men and women, fall and spring. And they're going to take care of the dead house? Yes. Okay. So we've got three years at $1,500 before we've overcome what it was going to cost us to put the dead house in. Yes, I moved to the So last year, we didn't mow and we didn't pay anything, right? I know that we did not pay anything last year. I honestly couldn't say how much mowing we did. I don't think we did any mowing. I don't think we did. I don't think we did that. And I don't think we did either because we discussed. Yeah. We discussed this. So it seems like a big jump from from, have, from having it for free and not having to mow. Now we have to mow and pay. Isn't that like a yes. double whammy? Well, they're building dugouts. Dugouts. And this is a five-year contract. Soccer dugouts. They'll be. Done this year. They have not, to my knowledge, they have not shared when they would be completed. But that was something that we had anticipated needing to take on, and they're taking that off of our plate. I think low those many years ago, they were just so excited that we approved <laughs> having soccer that they, right, they it was, weren't pushing for anything. It was else. a carrot to be able to do that, and yeah. I think that we've proven that there's a lot of our students who have benefited right. from that. Right. What's your motion, Lisa? My motion was to pass it as written. Okay. Second. Motion by Lisa, second by Don. Any other discussion? All in favor? Right here. Okay, continuation of the student accident insurance coverage. I spoke to Mark Smith. This is something that I think as a district we've always been honored to be able to carry for our students and their families. 
um, Mark was able to again give us a contract with no rate increases um, for us to continue to build that student accident insurance coverage for our students here in Rochester schools. And I know we're one of the few schools that still continue to offer that, so it's a great benefit to our families and, and it's something that we have budgeted for and planned for and with no rate increases I would encourage us to go ahead and accept that and move forward with that coverage through Smith Sawyer and Smith as we've had in the past. What is the history of the claims on this? Because uh, the family's insurance picks it up and this doesn't kick in until after the family's coverage. Right. right. I've seen that right. So, have we used that much? I mean, that I know of. I can ask Mark. I know a family that, that used it with a, a child that was injured in athletics. Um, and they were amazed at how helpful it was. It's a Dean's family. Their insurance was good to begin with, but they were really amazed at how this this policy picked up. It seems like at the building levels, those would come in quite a bit. I think we utilize it quite a bit. We don't know it at the appropriation level. But I would say at the building level, Oscar's nodding his head, Candy's nodding her head. We utilize it a lot, and families are always kind of calms the situation when they know that we can help out in that. But we use, I, it seems like we utilize it a lot. So you think we're using more now? $26,000? Oh, yes. I believe so. I would assume, but we don't see that back. And I mean, we don't see, we don't see those forms and the bills and things. Yeah, but you know what's going on there, Candy. What do you, I mean, do you think? <laughs> oh, yeah, we definitely use it a lot now. I don't know if it's, you know. $26,000. Right. Across the district. I'm, I was just wondering why the other schools are not using it. And we are. I mean, it's very nice that we're doing it. I can call Mark. He's been very good to work with. I can call him. Okay. Oh, so, so this is obviously not a requirement. Does it limit our liability in any sense or anything like that, or it's just a benefit that we provide? Well, it doesn't limit our liability, but it, you know, anytime you've got a first responder uh, opportunity, uh, people who are grateful for a kindness are less likely to uh, you know, pu push another issue. Um, you know, if you solve their problem for a thousand dollars, then they don't have to worry about it being a three thousand dollar problem. And you know, and, you know, their exposure right now is a hundred dollars for the uh, out of pocket or deductible. So, Mara was working on this this week. I can call and get those specific numbers if you got. And when you look at those kind of numbers, you want to look over a range of years because, you know, right. that's how the insurance companies do it. One year you might get 5000 the next year you might get 50000 Take five years average out? Something, yeah, something. Yeah. You, you need to look at a spread of years because that's how they do it. And what's everybody else's thought? I think we should continue. Do we have to look for other insurance companies for competitive prices like it did? Not required to. Well, threshold services like that. Or not. Is there a way we could get a better price? Say like Lisa's family, she mentioned somebody has their insurance somewhere else that might not have even needed this but used it anyway. Is there a way we can it say you oh, after, after theirs after yeah. theirs is exhausted. Right. Okay. So it doesn't affect it doesn't affect no. that. I do have a question about uninsured families. Mm -hmm. Are we? Then it's probably the primary. Yeah. Does that then become primary? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. That's the idea. <laughs> maybe with the, the loss of the employer and deans, maybe we need to at least have it for this year. It's a one year, year at a time. It is. And yeah, we maybe this would be the year to make sure it's there. And this isn't just for sports. This is if the kids play basketball, lunch, and breaks. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Every, every student. Playground incidents. Absolutely. And we have a lot of those. You know, <laughs> seriously. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, take a motion. So moved. I make a motion that we continue the student access. Motion by Sandy. I second that. Second by Jenny. Any discussion? All in favor, right? Okay, motion carries.
Secretary Senator. I don't get this. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, faculty, staff, focus, male career, cool job description. There, as I <coughs> came into the position last year, there were a few jobs that, to my knowledge, did not have job descriptions and possibly had not been approved by the board. So one of the first ones we tackled was the position of the male courier. Um, that person is also responsible for all of our ASOPs, our substitute teacher um, program that we use across the district. I would, the, the changes or most specifically what we made sure that we outlined in that job agreement, I wanted, or job description, I wanted to add when we have our open swim evenings as we anticipate doing, that, that this person would also schedule all of the lifeguards during open swim. This would not take care of the athletic portion of lifeguards and scheduling, but this person would take care of the open swim lifeguards and making sure that somebody is there to work the gate. I know that I have sat down and met with um, the varsity swim coaches, the royal swim coaches, our health department. There were concerns about pool samples coming back and there were a couple of times that we've had to super chlorinate the pool. There are some things that we could be doing to better anticipate the needs of the pool with pool load sheets and anticipated bather load sheets. They're very, very simple to do. I don't anticipate it taking much time, and I believe that it could also be incorporated in this job as well. I've spoken to, to the current person in this position, and she also believes that that would be easy to do. The other noted detail is that we would just need this person full-time during the calendar days that students are in session, but would run um, on a part-time basis during the summer. So that would be a cutback in hours, as we've seen in the past for that position. Any questions? You don't need to take any action. Well, I don't know that the position has ever been... Creating a new position. Yeah, I don't know that it was ever created. <laughs> there, are, there were two positions that I, the board shared with me, the previous board shared with me that we needed to get taken care of. This was one of them. And then there's one in transportation that we'll be bringing to you that to our knowledge were not approved. And we're just trying to bring it up and make sure that we have the documentation needed. So we can just approve this as it as she's <coughs> described. Yeah. Okay. I move that we uh, accept that job description as Mrs. Vance. Yeah, it's, has. Not, it's not the packet, it should have been the packet. So. Oh, the job description is it? No. I think it is. Oh, it was shared at the study session. Yeah, you did. Well, we went over study session. session. I apologize, I thought it was better than that. That was not in It was this presented at the study session. And I can get copies. And the current employee knows that it's a kind of hours. Okay, I've got a motion by Lisa. Second. Second by Sandy. Any other questions? All in favor, right in. Motion carried 7 0. <clears throat> okay, we're moving on. The, the classified handbook updates uh, will be tabled in that. Uh, I guess you have some more. Yeah, there details are a few more out. changes that we want to make sure <clears throat> we get correct as we go through that that were brought to our attention. So we'll tackle that next time. Uh, we'll move on to personnel report. Now we have quite a few. So we'll. Uh, I'll start going through them. Uh, resignations, Leanne Eisinger, RHS assistant, or instructional assistant. Kate Wagner, Riddle instructional assistant, uh, substatus only requested. Heather Schreiber, Riddle assistant, instructional assistant. Uh, hirings, Allison Butler's RHS, RMS, fax teacher. Summer intercession, Brittany Piercy, additional third grade teacher. Julie Kitchell, middle instructional assistant. Uh, an additional position, uh, Lucas Scheinhaus as RHS data CIA coach. And we have Linda Joan, regular bus route driver. 
CIA coaches, Columbia, Jenny Keller, Joanna Johnson, Megan Gonwer, CIA coaches at Riddle, uh, third grade Mona Zion, fourth Sally Dunwoody, fifth Angie Smith, RHS Project Lead the Way, Joel Lowe, Kindergarten Instructional Assistant, Michelle Walters, Special Needs Instructional Assistant at Columbia, Elizabeth Davison, Sandra Honnefield, is that right? I have a question about that. Okay, uh, which one? The last one, Miss Sandra. Oh, Sandra. Um, is she working part time at both schools? She's down here for we Columbia as, we and talked, the high school. We, we talked as a team on Friday, trying to best place IAs, and I think she's at the. She's going to go to high school. school. She's going to high school. Yeah. I lost her. We got okay. It. We got it. Okay. <laughs> well, I just looked at this and I thought, oh. She's okay. That was the next thing I was going to say, Cindy, is that she changed the RHS yeah, special needs IA. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll move on. Extended day student workers, Riley Powell and uh, Madison Ranko. Payroll HR, Brenda Troyer. Eighth grade science, Mr. Pryke. And resignation of Riddle IA, Natasha Edwards. We have a reassigned Michelle Voss move from Columbia Special Needs to RMS Special Needs. Reassigned Stephanie Brown move from sixth grade math to eighth grade math. And reassignments, Deanna Vandebosch, RHS Library Media Coordinator. Shirley Swick, RHS Credit Recovery IA. And um, New is Kathy Eldridge, RHS Directed Study. Any questions? The motion approved the personnel report. So moved. Okay. Motion by Sandy. Second. Second by Brad. Any other questions? All in favor, right? Motion carried, seven zero. Okay, superintendent. Miss Misty's here. Oh. Right to okay. I'll stand up. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was to say thank you. I'm very, very excited. Very excited. As Jenny knows. <laughs> we used to work together. Oh, okay. We still are from Midtown Elementary, so we're excited to have her on board. I used to no, well, just Jenny here. And I didn't know she was going to be hired until I put it right here. <laughs> I didn't even know that I could. <laughs> well, Sawyer graduated Misty, so I thought, oh, you'll be all right. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Thank you. You're a good place. Yes, absolutely. Okay, uh, move on to superintendent business. The, just the one announcement we are having on the 27th next Monday. Brad Weaver and Don Meyer have agreed to help with our RCTA is going to come in and film where we are with our building projects and the changes that we've been able to go through and highlight those for the community as well as share future needs and concerns that we want to make sure that we make very public. And then I spoke with Geretti's uh, just today and they have reserved an area for us on that Monday from 1130 to 1230 to begin what we would like to do this year to see how it works, lunch and learn with the board members and with myself, and we anticipate rotating venues as well as board members, but making sure that we're available to the public to answer those questions like Tim brought up in regards to deans and, and what we're doing and how we're anticipating that impact construction needs, just anything that maybe they don't have the opportunity to come here to, but they might be able to join us for a lunch. So we will rotate the venues this this year and see how that goes, but our first one will be Monday as we're going through uh, construction projects and updates and and uh, invite the public to be there at 1130. Don's buying lunch. Don's buying lunch? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we invite the well, public to, to be PK. there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and ask any questions and we want to continue to grow those, but it's just another way to make ourselves available to the public. And, and the first one will be held at Dreddy's, but I don't anticipate that continuing. We want to rotate venues as well as we move forward through the year and get out to different places within the community. 
and we'll try to stagger times a little bit too during the different lunch periods. Or I'm lunch willing hours. to go in the evening if you want to do it too, because yeah, a lot of people can. work during the day. And Absolutely, we can look at that and start just making ourselves available in a different way. One school corporation that that we visited with at the last conference was uh, they did them in the morning. Mm -hmm. Like a bagel shop, but you know, but yeah, I forget what they had a very cute name for it, and of course, I don't remember okay. what that was, but it was sort of a yeah. absolutely. And, and then we also have a community meeting, we have formed a committee in regards to the requests um, about facility naming facilities um, and areas. And we have a great committee lined up, and they will be meeting next week as well on Thursday evening. And we've got that, is that correct? I think it's Tuesday, isn't it? The 28th. Tuesday. 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 Okay, I apologize. Tuesday, the 28th, and that committee has been formed, and uh, Brad and Tom will be leading us through that as well. So we will be bringing that back to the public with ideas and brainstorming what that looks like for our community and for Rochester schools. I think that's it. Uh, I, I was reading the high school handbook and what I thought I saw, I actually did see. Uh, er, earlier it did say parents and or, but under letter E, uh, it says if, if a student needs to be dismissed during the day, the school will only let him or her be signed out by someone who is listed on the emergency contact list. The student will not be released to anyone not listed on the emergency contact list. And so we probably would need to adjust that. Okay. Unless parents, parents are automatically on the list. Unless they are automatically are, but they're not always because sometimes parents want one parent called first. So. Okay. Yeah. Make that adjustment. That probably yeah. needs to be tweaked. Yeah. Because of that. Yeah. Any other questions? Any questions from the audience? Well, if not, thank you for coming. We'll adjourn the meeting. Thank <laughs> you.